how much did Prince Charles spend travelling from Scotland to Lincolnshire to see Prince William receive his RAF wings? The princely sum of £21,000. That's right. Uh, last April, uh, Chaz and Camilla hired a private plane and it cost almost £21,000 to travel from Scotland to Lincolnshire to see William receive his RAF wings. I'm guessing that that was because they had an engagement up in Scotland and in order to attend what is essentially a family do, he would have either had to cancel the event in Scotland, which would disappoint the people, or disappoint his son. 21 grand. You're watching The Right Stuff live on 5 with Stephen K. Amos, Larry Turner and Trudy Goodwin. Currently starring pole dancing drama The Naked Truth, London's Hackney Empire. Check it out if you can. Cheltenham after that, I think, isn't it? Cheltenham yeah, after yeah. that. Sold out, though. Oh. oh, there you go. You can't go. <laughs> <laughs> to people in Gloucestershire. Uh, still to come, is it worse to be jilted before you get to the altar or dumped just after you said, I do? Does it all depend on whether you've sent out the invites already? Uh, 027-173-5555 is the number to dial if you've been in this nightmare scenario. But first is first class travel, a royal right. Why should Britain's premier family travel first class or by private jet when it's you and me who are picking up the bill? The Queen, as I mentioned earlier, she's borrowed £6.4 million from a special reserve fund to balance the royal books. Why haven't I got one of those? <laughs> And yet, despite stories of crumbling palaces, the royals blew £5.3 million of our money on first-class flights, private jets and helicopters. Now, if your house was falling down, would you spend thousands chartering a private jet to witness your child's graduation? Of course you wouldn't. Not unless you were totally irresponsible. So why do we let the royals get away with it? Ironically, uh, considering he's an environmental champion, Prince Charles is one of the worst culprits. His tours to the Far East and South America cost more than £1 million. Wow. And on both occasions, he had to hire private jets, which I would argue is a tad hypocritical, given the visits were designed to highlight environmental issues and global warming. Now, aides insist the royals always look at the most cost-effective ways of travelling and that they only charter private planes when it's the only way they can get to engagements without having to cancel others. Is that a good enough excuse? After all, I say, we're the ones who want them to do all these engagements, aren't we? Now, the Dutch royal family, they have use of a, of a government-owned private jet. They share it with ministers, uh, but they frequently go about by bicycle. Uh, could you imagine getting on a train or, God forbid, a Ryanair plane and finding Queenie sitting next to you? Well, <laughs> if it's good enough for Queen Sophia of Spain, she flew home from Stansted on Ryanair earlier this month. Why not our own royals, Trudy? <sighs> Gosh, where do you start? I don't know. I've, I've just spent a lot of time travelling around the country, a lot of it on trains, right. and uh, I can't quite imagine the Queen trying to make her way down those corridors and does, with the luggage and all of that. But does... I mean, she still had the flunkies to do that. It's just... Yeah. It's interesting, because uh, before we came, just during the break then, people... Uh, were saying, the people that whisper in my ear, the dark forces, they, they were saying to me, but they are... <laughs> If we want a first-class royal family, they have to be accorded <coughs> well, uh, first-class This status. is why I'm a little bit... Uh, this is why I'm being a bit reticent, because I, I, it depends on whether you want a royal family, and I'm for, I don't want a royal family, so that's where I have a problem with it altogether. I does think. A but does a royal family have to go first-class? Why can't no. they do what Queen no, Sophia does and do. go I, easy? I don't see right any reason at all why they have to go first-class. Um, uh, but then I don't see any reason at all why we've still got a royal family, well, so... Yeah. Uh, Come That's the revolution. We haven't mentioned revolution yet this week, but it uh, is only <laughs> Tuesday. I don't think we should... I, I think after the Queen, it should all stop. Stop, yes. Basically. Although Charles is very popular. Lowry, do you think it's fair? No, I don't think it's fair. And um, They have a royal train, don't they, which yes. cost us 800 grand. That's Why right. aren't they on the royal train a bit longer? It seems to me, just cut the number of engagements they do and that let them... That means disappointing that doesn't matter. taxpayers it that doesn't, contribute that, to... I, no, it doesn't yeah. mean... I mean, you know... It's ridiculous. It's not like I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, you know, I'll be so disappointed if they don't open a sugar factory in somewhere. No, this is ridiculous. Cut the number and make them travel a bit slower so they don't have to get the private dish. They get the train. They live in a caravan, they, are driven. Can they just rotate around the country. <laughs> like a sort of travelling circus. I, yeah, obviously, obviously, there's, obviously, there's the argument about security and they have to be safe. Yeah. But I'd also like to know... Um, who, apart from Charles and the Queen, there's something here that says the Duke of Gloucester Very flew, important man. flew to, to had private jet to go to the, the the King of Tonga's inauguration. Someone had to go. What did they? <laughs> did we really? I don't think we did, did we? I mean, it's lots of jollies going on, isn't it? Okay, well, I, I, and I, I would like to see. I would like to see it reserved for the Queen 
possibly Prince Charles, okay. and they okay. have a ceiling, a budget they have okay. to stick now, to. Now, St Stephen, you can obviously give us a great insight in this because you're a great friend of the royals, aren't you? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. That, and, I, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to probably play are. devil's advocate here because I think um, Britain's premier family, the royal family, they do deserve. Uh, a premier service. I don't want to be on, um, uh, on... Even if it means their palaces are falling down and they rent private jets. I mean, that is a... Absolutely, of course. They, the, what they do for the, for, the, for, the, for the industry in terms of, uh, of uh, visitors to this country is amazing. Um, the Queen has, has, has served her country for many, many you years. You really do want to know the head of state. You? Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm working. You really, really want one. <laughs> She's the head of state. <laughs> I don't want to go into, uh, into, into any cheap supermarket or, or sit in economy class and see the Queen. Okay. That's not going to happen. Oh. OK, uh, well, let's throw it open to you uh, and find out what you think the royal should do as far as travel goes. Kirsty. At first we have Sam and he thinks we're losing respect for the royal family. OK, Sam, why would we be losing respect? Is it because we keep thinking they're ripping us off? Well, um, there's a couple of questions here. I think they need to save money by cutting down on travel right. and on certain trips. However, when they do go somewhere, I think they do need to go first class. And, and my point really trying to make is that if we start from the country being the head of state and the government, uh, let's just look at what we've been doing to the government over the last few weeks, then, let's, then it filters down through our community. And our youth of today are just looking at how we're treating the head of our, our state and our country, and they're treating their teachers, their police, Maybe we should start at the top. Maybe, and then Sam, get a maybe, bit of Sam. But maybe, life. Sam, the reason the kids are so unhappy is they feel dispossessed living in a world where a certain tiny percentage of the population is creaming it all off while everybody else lives in some kind of horrible situation. Yeah. Maybe Let's that's why. Let's go back why. to the time when we actually had respect for the people that were in charge. The reason we're angry, the, the reason we're angry with MPs. Or... The reason we're angry with MPs is because they're ripping us off. Right, that's why we're angry with them. So maybe you can just extend that and say, well, the royals, if they want their palaces fixed, why are they going around first class? You show me a gesture, Queenie. You cut back, OK, and go regular goat class, and we'll pay a little bit more tax and see a palace rebuilt. Well, that, that part I agree with. There are actually, as I say, two questions. There's the yeah. question of the budget and saving money, but there is also the question of putting them in first class, because seeing them in the train, seeing them in second class, or in the supermarket is not showing them respect. OK, so OK, Sam, th th thank you. I want to get one more in, if I can. One very Maggie's quick one. Maggie's online one. OK, Maggie, good morning. Hi, Matthew. Hi. Uh, do you think it's good they go first class? Um, well, it could be their choice. Why not give them the money? that's available to them and they can claim the standard fare they're like the well, rest they, they, of them have we, to pay. We, we do give them the money. Worth, um, Ma Maggie, 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 stop, 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 stop. We do give them the money. They're saying it's not enough. Yeah, well, then that's their problem. They can finance it. The Queen's okay. mother was very fond of telling us that she knew what it was like to be through the war. Well, yep. well, surely we're in a recession now. It's a time... And in a war as war. well, several. Yeah, yeah. I'm funny. We don't have money. We have to cut our budget. We have to change the way we live. Well, let them show it from the top. Revolution, now. sister. And Revolution. <laughs> nice one. Thank you. Shut up, Stephen. Do you, do you, do you Shut people, up. do you not know how difficult it is waving and handing out medals? <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to do it. <laughs> OK, from OBE, over back to OBN. Uh, and uh, after the break, we're asking... Uh, and this, this is serious, because I know it's going to affect some people out there, albeit not many. Is it worse to be jilted before you get to the altar or dumped after your marriage, just after your marriage? Does it all depend on whether the invitations have gone out, the embarrassment factor? Because if you know you've made a mistake, when should you act? Before or after you say, I do? 0207 173 is the number. I'd love to hear from you if you've been in this situation. Maybe, as divorce has little or no stigma these days, it is better to go through with it and then split later. But I want to know what you would do, what you did do. We'll find out after the ads. Who jilted their fiancé shortly before they were due to marry? Julian Roberts, Demi Moore or Audrey Hepburn? Find out after the break. <laughs> 